Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello and welcome to the video for what is the visual logger. So to get to the visual logger, we're going to go to Window, Developer Tools, Visual Logger. Now I have mine snapped down here, but if we open it up, it will make it full screen. Yeah, let's actually dock it. You'll see this is our visual logger. It's a way of visualizing log entries using the visual logger nodes. Now, you can access this inside of Blueprints or C++. We're going to cover the basics of the Blueprint parts and how it works. But do note that C++ does have access to many more options. So if you're going to be using C++, you will have access to more options. And I'll explain those as we go along. Now let's go ahead and run through our example. I'm going to hit play. We have a little logging thing at the top. And you'll notice right here in the middle of our screen it says minus 1. Well that's our little visual logging indicator when you have the visual logger up. If the visual logger is closed, this won't show up. So keep that in mind. When we hit logging on the top right, it's going to say VisLog Recording Active. And if we look at our visual logger, you're going to see it's, well, recording something. If we go back into our map and we run around, and then I jump a few times, we're going to go ahead and shut off logging. Go back to our visual logger. You'll notice it's no longer running. I will jump around a few times more and move. Go back to the visual logger. You'll notice it's not recording. It's because I've turned it off. And let's look at how it actually works and what we, information we get from it. So let's stop our map. Let's dock our visual logger now so that way we can actually see what's happening in our viewport. And let's scrub through it. So if you notice when we scrub through it, nothing really happens. That's because you need to have one of these categories selected. In this case, I have a blueprint called VisLog that's logging some items. And then I also have my character itself logging things when they jump. So that's why I have two different entries here. Both the viz log item and the third person character are logging differently. So let's click on like our viz log here and we'll scrub through this. Now you notice we have something that says actor location here. And when I get far enough, it starts to move. And you'll see it going around our map. So the viz log, what it was doing is every tick, it was simply grabbing the player's location using the viz log location node writing the text actor location here and putting a little dot right there and then logging it under the category actor locations. So you can see the actor location log there and you can see. So we know exactly where that actor was as it was moving while we were logging. The third person character, you notice when it gets to here, it says jump start. And then you can see the little blue line and then it says jump landed. And it continues on as we jumped with starting and ending. Now you can't see the starts very well because I'm jumping past it. You can scrub through like this. Or if you have a category selected, let's say we go to right here. You can use the arrow keys and it's going to proceed one frame at a time from the arrow keys. So you can see jump landage and start. And if you look in the background, let's get closer. That was kind of silly. You can see as I move it one frame at a time in here on that category. You can see it proceeding forwards or backwards with the arrow keys for scrubbing through. You can see my jump landed event and jump start event and then a little segment we're drawing. And if we look at the character itself, so here's my character. Inside you can see every tick. If we're supposed to be jumping, we're logging a segment, which is another node. It makes a little start to end point. And then we're also locating inside of our log a landed event and a starting event, which is where our little green and red location events. So that's the basics of what the visual logger does. You use nodes, in this case, logging locations, segments, squares, and things like that in text. At certain times, it adds it into our visual logger as an entry, and then you can scrub through it so you can visualize those things. Now, you do have the options to save and load existing ones. So you could save existing ones, save them all. You can load older ones up for recurring. These are just pretty much text files, so you will be able to read them out if you have a third-party program, for example. If you're done working in here, you can clear out, and it'll clear out all this existing data. You can actually manually start and stop and pause them right here if you want to do that manually instead of like my little button at the top of the screen. You also have the ability to filter in and out. So here, 
I've unchecked all three of these, and you'll notice nothing happens. We have nothing left inside of our search. We have a jumps category, which you'll now notice has these entries, which goes through for starting and ending. We have a segments category, so it's only showing the little segments I recorded. And then we have an actor location, which is only showing the actor location. And those are all just little filters we put in here for categories. Now, all the individual information for these nodes are covered in their own individual videos. So feel free to look at those to get more information on how the nodes work and some examples on how we might want to use them.